I was actually doing a quiz the other day, football quiz. So sorry to do this to you, but they That's asked right. me, the question was, what was the first ever own goal in the Premier League? Who scored the first ever own goal? I did. It was you. It was I me. It, I got it wrong. <laughs> did you? Who did you put? I can't remember what I put now, but I, was it the one at Blackburn where it, you sort of went to release it quite early and then talk us through it? That's right. That's right. Well, I do, on the after-dinner circuit, I tell people that um, we were 3-1 down with two minutes to go. And I'd had 20 quid on Blackburn to win 4-1 that day at 25-1. to 1, But that's not true. That's just a little bit of banter. Now, um, I dived, Colin Hendry, I did it. I dived down. I lost control of the ball. And it was at a time, I, I, I was a young lad. I was making a lot of mistakes. And little did I know at the time that that was the Premier League's first ever on goal. So that is, it's, quite, it's quite a famous quiz question now going around the pubs. Who scored the Premier League's first ever on goal? I always get that one right, though. <laughs> I suppose you made up for it, though, didn't you? Because when, when you went to Sheffield Wednesday with Brian Laws, you scored yeah. the other end. I did, yeah. Um, I ignored Lawsy because he was saying, get back. Don't, where are you going? He says, you'll never get back. But Billy Mercer was the goalkeeping coach, and I was looking over to the sidelines saying, shall I go, shall I go? And Lawsy and Laws is going, get back, big man, get back. Because he, he obviously knew me, they knew I couldn't run. Uh, so I ignored him. I ignored him. Like a, like a lot of the times when I ignored him when we actually played together at Forest. <laughs> uh, but no, I went. I just went up there and uh, Gareth Bale was marking me. I've got the picture uh, in the other room, actually. Well, it's in the attic. <laughs> um, I've got the picture that somebody actually took and Gareth Bale's like actually looking up at me as I heard the ball. Gareth Bale was a young 17-year-old playing for Southampton at the time and he was marking me from the corner. Uh, and I just said, watch out, there's a train coming. And as the ball, <laughs> as the ball, as the ball came in, I managed to get on the end of it and, and, and score, a, score a, an header and I just didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to do after it. I didn't know how to celebrate or anything, but... I look back on my career and it is one of the finest moments for, to go up and equalise in the last minute. And you must be quite a brave man as well because one of the stories I remember telling when I went to the audience with at Southbank City um, was, was it at the side of the M1 with Stuart Pearce on the way back from a game one time? Yeah, we, we, we'd been to Cheltenham, we had a bit too much to drink and uh, he, he, he kind of... He kind of um, he weren't too he weren't too happy with the way that I'd, I'd handled myself. I wasn't myself because I'd been a bit of an idiot to be honest, and just young, naive, going out when I shouldn't have gone out, and living the high life when you shouldn't. Looking back now, I would never do it again. It cost it cost Forest millions of pounds at Portsmouth what I did, and and Pierce wasn't too happy, but and, and he let me know. But I just felt that he let, it was over it over a bit few too many drinks at Cheltenham races and. We'd, best to describe it on here because I know it'll be going out is probably that um, there wasn't a winner. <laughs> I've written down here fisticuffs. <laughs> <laughs> there was a, a bit, a little bit, yeah, a little bit of handbags and that like, but yeah, obviously we're online, so I don't. I, I've got massive respect for PC and any as for me as well as I know. But let's say that we we come to a few um, uh, raised fists. He played under him, of course, as well, during your playing days at Forest, briefly, when he was a caretaker manager. How different was he from being on the pitch to obviously doing both management and playing as well, or just managing? It was... It was listen, he was a no-nonsense... We all know he was a no-nonsense character, and he ran the dressing room. Uh, he, didn't like, he didn't let anybody step out of line, which is a manager's dream. So if I'm ever going to be a manager, which I'm not, but if I, I'm choosing someone who's going to run that dressing room for me, to take away the pressure from me. I don't want to be dealing with what's going on in the dressing room. I want my captain to run it. And he certainly did that. Uh, joined in with us when we went at Christmas parties and things like that. We went to a good time, but he ran the dressing room and he, and he demanded the best out of you. And if you weren't giving your best, you knew about it. He, I played under him, but only under a caretaker role. So it was a little bit strange for him. He was, he was thrown in at the deep end. and um, so. He was very much still like a player at the time uh, and didn't change too much. 
Uh, I don't know what it was like after that as a manager, but I always, you always thought playing with him and when he became that caretaker manager, manager but that, that was his next, that was his next step.